Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you to the kickoff of our Africa DLC pack mini series for Planet Zoo. Returning to our sandbox zoo here, just like we did for the Southeast Asia pack DLC and the Aquatic pack DLC. This time, of course, with the brand new Africa pack DLC. Again, a massive thanks to the folks over at Frontier for giving me access to this DLC so that I could showcase it on the channel. I can show you guys the animals, I can show you the new architectural pieces, and boy, do we get into them in this time lapse. I'm really excited, actually, to share what we uh, get down to today. Just want to mention really quickly, of course, if you've been enjoying this format of coverage for the DLCs, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Again, it makes a very big difference in just what I do on the channel and how I go about doing it. I want to mention as well, if you would like to grab the DLC for yourself, or perhaps the base game, or a different game entirely even, I do have a game store where if you buy games, you'll be supporting the channel as you pick them up, and you'll be getting a Steam key for yourself as well. Now, this DLC should be available on my game store right now. Uh, if it is, I will have a link in the description down below. If it's not, then I will mention as much that it's not yet available, but it, sh it should be available right now. Just throwing it out there, though, if you would like to support the channel in that way, you can. No obligations, though. Don't feel any pressure whatsoever, just to be clear. Now, with all that out of the way, let's Let's get right into it. So today's animal, I'm sure the, uh, the the thumbnail gave it away, is going to be the meerkat. And I had a bit of a sort of crisis, I guess, going into this first episode because I really wanted to do the meerkat. But I also really, really wanted to explore some of the uh, Moorish architectural pieces, the uh, more specifically kind of North African architectural pieces. But the meerkat is not a North African animal. So uh, I was kind of, I was at a bit of a, it was a bit of a situation for me to try and reconcile the two wants and desires. Now, I have some plans for the meerkats in our franchise mode playthrough. Uh, so again, folks, if you're unfamiliar with the channel, we have a franchise mode Let's Play that's, you know, past episode 200 total now, so to speak. But uh, that's where I intend to uh, get the meerkat in there with more, let's call it, uh, fitting or appropriate uh, cultural references to where it's from. And I already have some plans for that, so I thought, why not let's get a little, uh, little marginally, I suppose you could say, off-brand over here uh, to take advantage of this opportunity to explore not just a new animal, but also some of these new architectural pieces. Because uh, while a lot of the animals in this new DLC pack are from Sub-Saharan Africa, or just, you know, all the way South Africa, not the country, the part of the continent, Southern Africa, I suppose, um, these a lot of the architectural pieces are actually very much inspired by uh, North African styles. So there's a bit of a juxtaposition there, and I thought, you know, why not let's dive in. And the story here, as it were, uh, would be, um, you know, this is like the uh, the Moroccan prince or the other Moroccan king's um, zoo where he's got a bunch of meerkats or something. I don't know. You know, there's there's ways to justify this stuff. Uh, I could justify it in my head if I if I if I wanted to, and I think that's the uh, the story I'm going to stick with, I guess. But uh, but yeah. It gives me an opportunity to explore this very interesting new animal with some really interesting new behaviors, which we're going to be seeing in full force after the time lapse. But it also lets me play with some of these pieces. We've got these absolutely gorgeous uh, mosaic pieces, um, very reminiscent, uh, very, very, very appropriately reminiscent, um, and uh, uh, you know of, of the of the architectural styles that they're they're going for. So I'm I'm really glad to see uh, see them kind of in place and how they work. They've got new paths as well, and we're using some of the new paths. Actually, they match again the kind of again that same North African kind of style. And the thing is, as I was looking at these pieces, and as I was considering the fact that meerkats are like guests can enter a meerkat enclosure, I thought it would be great to kind of build like a courtyard um, veranda kind of a thing, I guess, and uh, see how the different pieces can come together to, to create that garden space kind of a vibe. Now, the interesting thing is that typically when you think of a, of a, of a, of a garden space, you expect there to be a lot of you know, flowers and vegetation and stuff. Uh, however, with the meerkat and where they're from, uh, we can't really go overboard with, with flowers. It's uh, more of a rocky kind of a garden, I suppose. It's a more rock... Oh, garden. Oh, my God. That one's kind of bad. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to embrace it. Uh, but, yeah, so it ends up being more... It's a very, like, desert-themed garden. You, you could almost say it's like an oasis-themed garden without the actual water. Like, it's got palm trees and all that kind of stuff going on. Uh, really quite pleased with it. Um, but uh, one of the first things I put down, apart from the pads, are these, like, back walls. So what I really like about some of these pieces, actually is uh, they've added new 
uh, plaster pieces that are in the shape of, well, appropriate, you know, decor elements. Uh, what I love about that is, those of you, again, that follow the channels like Franchise Mode Let's Play and stuff, uh, I, I really like the plaster pieces. They're so versatile, uh, especially the ones that you can kind of like rotate and place exactly how you want rather than the, the grid-based ones. They're so versatile, you can throw colors on them and they look quite nice as well. They're Because of the texture they have on them, they're not plain, uh, even when they're just, you know, even when they are plain, so to speak, they're not plain. Uh, so I really do quite like them. And now they've added these uh, North African inspired plaster pieces, which work well with those plaster pieces, and then you can get more complex pieces or complex kind of designs out of them. We've also got a lot of like lattice work and things like that, which I, I really appreciate the uh, uh, the look of. And uh, I mean, again, it's uh, it was hard for me not to just like throw everything in here because it's it's all so beautiful. Uh, like to be perfectly honest, uh, I, I could have easily, and in fact, I almost do spend the entirety of the time lapse working with these various pieces because I, I, I love them. I love the colors. I love the uh, the, the, the way they kind of like, you know, quote unquote, snap together, so to speak. It, it's all it's all absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, I do end up spending, I think the vast majority of this time lapse working on architectural elements. Uh, we do get some natural elements in as well, don't worry. But uh, but it's just kind of funny to think about how much the uh, the, the architectural pieces really kind of uh, took me away. I, I think this is the, the most I've enjoyed playing with um, or exploring new uh, architectural pieces. And there's a lot of stuff that we haven't even explored here. There's like good decorative elements and plates and 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 uh, sculptures and things like that. But I stayed focused primarily on these bigger pieces over here um, to establish this kind of again this courtyard garden kind of a vibe, if you will. Um, got the uh, the fountains in the far wall, a couple of pillars as well. You might have noticed earlier. I will do like a again as we look at the animals afterwards as well. We'll have plenty of time spent in the enclosure. So if you feel like you're you missed something or, or you didn't catch something, then don't worry. We're going to be spending. Plenty of time in this enclosure. Uh, also, just making some adjustments over here to the pathing. Uh, I, I liked what I had earlier, but then I realized it doesn't really doesn't really work. Um, and I, I just I, I've already made this space absolutely ridiculously massive. This would be a good way to kind of reduce the amount of space it takes uh, and fence in the uh, the animals as well. Because uh, yeah, I mean, again, I've definitely gone overboard. They barely need like a couple hundred. Uh, meters square. They they do not need a lot of room, so uh, I've I've already gone well overboard. So I thought this would be a good excuse to kind of shrink it all down and, and make it a bit more reasonable. Uh, and then we can get the fencing in. Now uh, the fencing, I decide to go. I, I decide to stack it too high. Again, there's a few you might have seen at the bottom there. There's a few new fence pieces. Again, they're like themed North African fence pieces, and uh, there there's some curved ones. There are these like flat ones. They look pretty good. The only weird thing about them is the shadow they cast because of how the um the the lattice work is done. It, like Technically speaking, how the, how the lattice work is done, uh, it doesn't really cast a, a shadow that shows you the, um, the 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 lattice the lattice work in the shadow. So that's a little funny looking. It makes it feel like they're floating, even though they're not. They're very much grounded. They're very much on the ground, uh, but it certainly uh, certainly stands out. Yes, I'd, I'd be uh, I'd be lying if I pretended that didn't. <laughs> uh, but it, I can I can happily say at least that the the two stack looks good, uh, in my humble opinion, and it does do the trick as well. It does. Uh, keep the animal in um they're not able to like sneak out over or under or through or anything like that so uh, that all that all works pretty nicely um but yeah just making this uh it's, it's a little uh it's a little rough around the edges but again uh, it's all in the interest of uh of bigger picture thinking because i wanted to get to this central space as well i want to actually get some of these trees down get a bunch of palm trees down make it feel like a bit of a a relaxed garden space we're going to be getting down some uh, putting down some uh, benches and stuff as well and there's some new benches uh which really fit the the vibe as well they they, they really have done a very good job of capturing um uh, capturing the feel from from the colors to the actual like uh look of the the models uh, i'm really quite pleased and the only unfortunate thing is that i don't think there is an appropriate um vegetation that you can use to put on the lattice uh that looks right interacts with the lattice appropriately and also fits the uh like the animals um requirements i went with a scavola bush over here because i find like that's kind of like it, it tends to like just work uh when you look at it from the right angles and stuff it does a good job from up top and from down low and again we'll get some views afterwards uh while i go around right now putting down some of these uh you know toys and and, and things like that but uh yeah the scavola bush i think does a good job of creating a proper like canopy and and and, and covering those uh those walkways and here are those uh, benches as well. Again, I think they work quite nicely. They're beautiful. They're a bit more. They're 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 complex, but they're not gaudy. I often talk about how like a lot of the benches are very gaudy. These ones are not, but they're still complex. You know, they they, they have things going with them. 
uh, going, like, they have a lot going on, is what I mean to say. Uh, but apart from that, with with uh, with some of the more human touches, I guess, done, going back to some of the more uh, more natural touches, putting down some rocks, getting some you know shrubs and stuff done. I'm actually quite pleased with how uh, the the rock garden, if we can call it that, uh, ends up. I get rid of these flowers. Actually, I decided to go purely like rock, more of a desert vibe, uh, and I'm I'm pretty pleased for for something that has a very little. Uh, you know, very few like flowers and stuff. It, it feels very alive, and 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 the palm trees help make it vibrant. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm actually, yeah, pretty happy with it. I mean, I hope you guys like it as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What you would do differently? What you would like to see me, uh, you know, experiment with, perhaps, or or yeah, just how uh, how you would have uh, tackled a bit more of a kind of desert garden, if you will. Um, overall, pleased with the colors, pleased with the layout, pleased with uh, how things have come together, both natural and uh, you know, man-made elements. And uh, again, yeah, I hope you all like it. But that pretty much does it for the time-lapse, folks. We're going to be diving in with the animal in just a moment and seeing all of their behaviors. They're absolutely adorable. They get up to a lot of really good mischief as well. Uh, so yeah, folks, I hope you enjoyed the time-lapse. But for now, we're headed back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse, and I am very excited to uh, see how our brand new animals, the first in our DLC showcase over here, uh, how they interact with this space we've created for them. Again, it's nothing like anything else in this zoo, but uh, that's kind of the kind of the point, right? We're gonna try and like really break the mold with our first one. So as this little DLC mini series continues, hopefully we're going to see something that is very different on this side compared to what we had, you know, on this side or even down the middle over here between the aquatic and the Southeast Asian DLCs. But with that said. Let's not waste any time. I'm sure you're all excited, just as I am, to see the animals again in the space, see how they interact with uh, the guests when they come in, and see how they interact with the, uh, I mean, just the the path and the digging and, and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff we can expect, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing it all. So let's go ahead and first things first, of course, pop open Zoopedia and take a look at the meerkat. Now, right off the bat, actually, since we have the uh, natural habitat open, I just want to mention um, there is a bit of a, and I, I may have mentioned this during the time lapse, but I just want to quickly say it again in case I didn't mention it during the time lapse. There is going to be a slight disconnect with regards to the architectural styles we've used and the region uh, from which the meerkat hails. Um, it's a very rare thing for me to do. Uh, the reason why I did this is because I already kind of had a, an idea of what I want to do with the meerkat at Elitsu South. That's the franchise mode. A let's play that I'm doing right now and that'll be a lot more sort of at least based on what I have in mind right now a lot more culturally focused around the uh, region down over here uh, and because I already have some plans for that over there I thought it'd be nice to explore something a little bit different some of the pieces that came with the new DLC for this first kind of showcase episode so in my head I've got this like story of like the the you know like the Moroccan king or or or, or, or prince if you will uh, has got a bunch of uh meerkats in his backyard kind of a thing. Uh, so we've actually got uh, very North African architectural styles, even though the animal we're going to be putting in uh, is very much not from North Africa. But uh, with that said, I, I just wanted to see what a garden space with these animals digging around you and stuff might feel like. There were a lot of reasons why I wanted to go with this kind of garden space kind of a vibe. And then I, I saw the pieces. And I mean, again, those of you that are familiar with the channel know I've spent... Uh, a uh, few years of my life in Morocco, uh, the nostalgia hit hard, and uh, I just wanted to play around with the pieces and, and see how they all worked, and they're absolutely gorgeous pieces, absolutely beautiful pieces. They come together really nicely, and uh, and I couldn't help myself, right? So uh, my apologies uh, for that, I, I suppose, but it should be a good time. Now, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the information over here. The meerkat, the suricata, suricata, ah, I see, once with a single T, the second time with a, with a second T. I need to know why. <laughs> I need to know why. Population in wild is unknown. They aren't really uh, hugely endangered or anything like that. Least concern. The meerkat is a species of social mongoose that is found in complex underground burrows in the savannas and semi-deserts of southern Africa. It lives in family packs and is considered to be eusocial, meaning it is highly socially organized and pack members have strongly defined roles within their group. Meerkats have a flat, pointed head and a colored face with black eyes and ears. They have a mottled pattern of gray and yellow fur on their back and a pointed, black-tipped tail. Meerkats move on all fours but assume a distinctive stance on their hind legs when alert. Not just distinctive, ridiculously adorable. 
The Meerkat has a head body length of 9.6 inches to 14 inches and weighs between 21.7 ounces and 33.95 ounces. These numbers mean nothing to me. I, <laughs> I'm familiar with grams and kilograms, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and say they're probably pretty light, um, right? Females tend to be heavier than males. The meerkat is not endangered. All right, very well. They are, uh, I mean, again, they're absolutely adorable uh, animals. Uh, there are, so there's some amazing animals in this pack. It was very difficult for me to pick a first animal to go with, uh, but uh, but then, I, like, like I was saying, I kind of saw the pieces and I had the story in mind and I would like, I wanted to make something that guests could uh, enter into. And so the meerkat became a uh, top pick, but we'll of course be exploring all the other animals from this DLC over the course of this mini series. Again, folks, if you do like these mini series, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It does really help me make decisions on the channel. Now, moving on, we've got uh, again, of course, they're sort of uh, Southern African uh, origins uh, means they are a grassland and desert biome animal. They need very little space individually. We have gone way overboard but hopefully it'll give them some room to run around and, and explore and, and have some fun again right it wouldn't be a, a party elite enclosure if it didn't you know go like five times overboard as far as size is concerned i'm not sure if our boundary is going to work out we've got this physical uh north african fence piece that came with the dlc as, a, as our boundary i'm not sure if that's going to work out but we'll we'll find out soon enough and as far as uh, you know they have no water requirements or anything like that uh but i do want to see this borrowing uh that's supposed to be a new like you can actually see them borrowing and digging and that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm excited to see how that plays out. Group size is 2 to 30, up to 20 males, up to 20 females. That's awesome. Male bachelor group size is 2 to 12. Female bachelor group size is 2 to 3. And that's probably, that disparity is probably because their dominant system is with an alpha female in a matriarchal society. So probably more competition in a female bachelor group or, or more reason to separate from a female bachelor group. Mating system is polyandrous. The relation with humans is neutral, and guests can, in fact, yes, as I said, enter the habitat. So again, hoping to see you know, how, how they actually respond to that human presence, I suppose. Size is 12 inches long across the board. Life expectancy is 15 years across the board. And weight is, yeah, okay, this is, these averages, they've got to be, they, they can't actually be the same for, for both across the board, right? For every animal. 27.125 ounces for both male and female. Sexual maturity at three years, sterility at death. Number of offspring per mating event is 3 to 6, gestation of 2 months, interbirth of 12, and reproduction in captivity is easy. So hopefully we're going to see some baby meerkats right off the bat today. Social needs. Meerkats are highly social species and should never be kept alone. Ideally, meerkats should live in family packs to replicate the social structure that exists in the wild. I, I can imagine they get pretty, I mean, again, if, if they expect to be in groups of, you know, potentially 30, I can, I can expect they get... Uh, pretty depressed if they're entirely alone so that makes sense but it, it's kind of interesting that uh i mean i i guess yeah you need at least just the one companion in uh in your meerkat life i suppose reproduction in a meerkat pack there's an alpha female who will give birth to most of the pups in the pack subordinate females occasionally reproduce but their young will be at risk of being killed by the alpha wow subordinate <laughs> yeah that doesn't matter how cute the animal is uh nature is uh nature is pretty metal <laughs> subordinate females occasionally reproduce but uh, subordinate females are more likely to reproduce in highly productive times when there's plenty of food available well, that makes sense uh, to initiate mating a male will fight with the alpha female and she will attempt to fight him off fighting can be quite rough with grabbing and face nipping if the male wins the fight he will grab the female around the middle and mate with her after pregnancy of 60 to 70 days the female will give birth to three to seven pups the pups remain in the den until they are 16 days old, where they are protected and fed by the alpha female as well as other pack members. Between 16 and 26 days old, the pups will venture to the entrance of the den and may be seen playing there. Like just actively just playing, I guess, yeah. At 26 days old, they will begin foraging with the adults who will teach them how to hunt different types of prey. An example of this is how adults teach young to pull the sting off scorpions before eating them. Oh, so... Curious. It's this is all it, again. This kind of stuff. The seeing animals teach their offspring is just one of those cool things, um, which like obviously they do. Like these, so, like it, it, it's it's like what what comes instinctually and what needs to be taught and how does teaching work for animals? You know, how do you teach your child? To, to, to pull the sting off a scorpion before eating it. Like, well, how are they? I, I don't know. I, I always get so curious about these kinds of things. I absolutely love uh, reading about, like, reading about it. And I, you know what? I quite like how this um, reproduction, well, 
find it kind of weird that it's that this information sits under reproduction but i understand why but i really like how this section's been written it's very detailed i, I always comment on on the the detail level of some of these things uh, and I, I just i want to give you know compliments where they're due this is very detailed i like that an example was included that really kind of it means more than just saying oh they'll teach them how to hunt there's a specific example and it really illuminates the uh, the meerkat a bit more i think anyway Pups are weaned between 7 and 9 weeks old. By 12 weeks old, pups are independent and can forage without help. Juveniles will reach sexual maturity between 2 and 3 years old. Males will migrate from their natal group when they reach sexual maturity and go in search of an unrelated pack or an unattached female with which to start their own pack. Females are more likely to remain with their natal pack because they have the possibility of ascending through the ranks to be alpha female one day. However, if a subordinate female challenges the alpha female and loses, she will be ousted from the pack. Oh, wow. The alpha female is determined by age and size, but younger females will vie for this position when the previous alpha becomes too old to defend her status. Dude, you could make, you could absolutely make a whole... Um, <laughs> there, there are so many interesting, like, uh, <laughs> inheritance things going on over here. That's really cool. I've I've always known like meerkats have a pretty complex like social hierarchy and stuff, but I didn't realize you know how power hungry uh, uh, subordinate meerkats were or how the uh, you know how if you lose if you if you challenge the alpha and you fail you get ousted from the pack like these are some pretty intricate behaviors and and uh, really fascinating as well and like you know do you do you coordinate <laughs> do they do they coordinate which subordinate female makes the challenge or 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 does the one who thinks she's the you know the alpha subordinate so to speak you know what i mean right the, the one that feels most capable uh make the move or do subordinates fight amongst each other uh you know to, to try and make sure that when the alpha becomes old and weak and frail they're the subordinate who's able to uh to take to take her out this is really fascinating stuff i find this absolutely Bonkers, awesome! This is really cool. <laughs> I was saying in the last session of our of our um, regular uh, franchise mode that like I love the way these are written, especially when they make you curious and they add questions because then you have someone to go out and and, and kind of look up. This is very fascinating stuff. All right, um, males may leave their pack on their own or in groups of two to three. I was wondering about that. When a male locates an unrelated meerkat pack, he is likely to be met with hostility. He will have to hover on the edge of the group for several days before being accepted. If a single male and single female locate each other, they may start their own pack. So I was wondering about that because I mentioned earlier as well that sometimes they'll kind of like go go about alone to find um, another loner and make their own pack. So like when it says they should never be kept alone, uh, does that mean specifically when in captivity? Because I, I think it was the hyenas where there were there was a specific difference between how they should be um, sort of kept together in captivity versus how they actually are out in the wild so i wonder if that's the implication over here that if they're out in the wild it's fine for them to be alone because of you know whatever reasons but when they're in captivity being kept alone is just you know harrow a harrowing experience i totally understand the difference if that's the case but i just wonder if that is what's being uh, described over here that's some very fascinating stuff that's some very cool stuff meerkats are already adorable um i've also again always known they've had some pretty interesting social uh uh like hierarchies and stuff but this is uh this is really cool all right, research status, of course, we've got everything unlocked over here, so we will take a look. They have the tunnel, which we did manage to put down. I might put a slow feeder down as well, uh, but the tunnel is their kind of unique um, thing. Oh, the tennis ball as well. That should be kind of fun. It's a small ball for them to roll around, I guess. I imagine it's just a, a ball. It's not like they're going to, like, you know, pick it up and stuff. I mean, maybe. We'll, we'll check. Fun fact number one. The teeth and front claws of the meerkat are adapted for digging, and it can close its ears and nostrils to prevent dirt from entering them. Oh, makes sense. Meerkats will mob and sometimes kill snakes that enter their territory. I have, I've seen, not in real life, but I've seen this. This is a, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty baller. Fun fact number three, in some areas of South Africa, meerkats are kept on farmland to act as pest control due to their ability to effectively kill rodents and pest insects. Okay, now how domesticated are they? I assume it's not like a case of a full and proper domestication. Uh, I imagine it's like a, uh, like you, you allow them, you, you encourage them to, to be on your farmland as opposed to you actively keep them and, you know, have a little like hutch for them and stuff. I don't know. Fun fact number four, meerkat females have a hierarchy of social rank with the oldest and largest female usually assuming the role of alpha. Oh, come on now. Come on now. You got lazy with that fun fact. That is literally, that is literally in the species data over here. Ah, 
Ah, uh, going so strong too. Fun fact number five, meerkat packs have sentries that give different alarm calls to warn their pack mates of different predators. This is another thing I know, but it is quite fascinating. Overall, the fun facts are pretty good. Number four was a little... Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. That's all elsewhere in the Zoopedia. But, uh, but no, the, the sentry thing I find to be really interesting. I'd known for the longest time about sentries, but I'd only relatively recently found out about how there are different uh, calls for different predators, which again, you know, to us it probably all sounds relatively similar, but that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, interspecies enrichment, they actually do get along with the aardvark, which is nice as well. The aardvark is, of course, from a much larger uh, region of, uh, of sub-Saharan Africa, but, uh, but of course they have that shared space down in this corner over here, so um, there is a bit of an opportunity there. And with aardvarks as well, just as a reminder, guests can enter the habitat. So if you want to make a joint habitat that guests can enter into, uh, you can do that, but of course, aardvarks are shy. So a slightly different uh, experience between the uh, the meerkat and the uh, and the the aardvark, of course. But uh, let's let's stay focused on the, the meerkat, shall we? Let's go ahead and grab some. Actually, go over to animal trading, and uh, what I've actually done for our sandbox here is I have changed some of the settings. This was actually recommended the last the last time I did this mini series. I got a handful of comments, well, quite a few comments actually, uh, with regards to just turning some of the settings off because they don't really make a difference for our sandbox um, mini series, right? The, uh, I'm forgetting how to spell meerkat. There we go. The uh, like aging, dying, those kinds of things. Like they're not really adding anything to our experience. So uh, it was suggested that it makes sense to just kind of turn those things off. So we have done that. So we don't have to worry about some of those things and we can more quickly kind of you know, get the animals in. We don't have to send them to quarantine and things like that. Uh, I think that was a, a very, very good call. Very, very prudent. Oh, let's go and pick you up as well. Let's go ahead and head on over to our animal storage and grab three of you and bring you right in. The Habitat 20. It's kind of wild to think how, uh, how long we've been doing this miniseries. Let's go ahead and unpause and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see how they behave in this space. It is really wild to come back to, uh, to this miniseries zoo from time to time. Uh, how it's expanded from being just like a one-off for the aquatic DLC to, I mean all of this. This is a big zoo. It's basically it's basically a full-fledged zoo just done in uh, in franchise mode. All right, there we go. The meerkats are making their way over. I hope they have a good time. I hope they have a good time. Again, I understand the architectural styles are a bit more uh, Moorish, but hey, these I, I suppose these meerkats are are, are more cats and uh, they'll uh, they'll uh, they'll they'll adapt. It's not like the architect it's not like they'll be judging the architectural styles, you know. Uh, let's go on over here. How did you... Okay. Not sure how you escaped, but fair enough. Let's go ahead and capture you. You guys are coming up from over here. Here we go. Alright. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this. They're so small. <laughs> They're tiny. I I always lose a sense of scale in this game. I mean, geez. Oh, they're really small. Hey, buddy. So fidgety. I... I'm gonna love watching these guys in action. I've definitely made this space way too large for them. I mean, again, the good thing is that you can get a bunch of them, and they can, they, you know, as you have more of them, they'll run around and uh, and interact with more of the space and stuff. So that's all good. Can we? Are you seriously? How are you escaping? This thing used to work just perfectly fine up until today. Um, but let's take a quick look before we watch them too much and get too lost in that. Um, oh right, I guess uh, needs and stuff don't really matter. It's kind of good to see the the, the, the numbers and, the, and, and where the, the markers lie, I suppose, but right, that's the thing with uh, with turning off some of the, the settings in sandbox mode, I suppose. Whoa, 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 what is this? This could go horribly wrong. Let's go ahead and pop you down right away. Thank you very much. Um, before somebody escapes. These, okay, hold on. Hang on a second, folks. I didn't want to have to deal with this, but I, I don't know how these guys are getting out over here. Go ahead and capture both of you. They're just like walking out or something. I'm not exactly sure how or why. Alright, real quick. Habitat. It doesn't say you're able to escape. I don't see any escape routes. Oh, up over here? Oh, they're suddenly now able to, uh, I guess, climb a little higher. Is the game crashed on me or 
Well, I'm certainly glad I saved the game after building this enclosure because the game did, yes, just crash on me. Now, okay, we know what the problem is over here. I'm not sure when it became a problem, but let's go ahead and just very crudely over here. Bear with me, folks. Just going to do do a crude job of this because it's, it's again, it's not the focus of, uh, of this zoo anymore. Um, let's go ahead and make sure these guys are not able to, to escape so easily. Yeah, I don't know when that changed. Must have changed how... Uh, how their, uh, their pathing is calculated or something. This used to work flawlessly before. All right, do we actually have any uh, meerkats, or have they have they been have they been removed? Um, take a look at our zoo. Take a look at our animals. Take a look at our options here. Do we have the? We do not have any meerkats. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Love it. Uh, over to the animal market then. Go ahead and pick up some meerkats again. It's almost like it never happened. Good thing I didn't get too much of a chance to get attached to those guys. Where are we? Um, we're getting out of spell again. Meerkat, there we go. Go ahead and, you know what, let's go ahead and just grab all of them. Let's go. Pick all of you up and send you all into Habitat 20. Alright, cool. Let's unpause. And actually speed time up a little bit. Uh, make up the, the lost time, basically. I apologize for that. That's uh, just my luck. That it would uh, it would crash on me. There we go. And now, hopefully, again, we'll uh, we'll see how they like the space, how they interact with the space. I, I really want to see some of these new activities, especially. And if we're again, if we're lucky, we're gonna have some uh, some baby meerkat, right? Meer meerkats and pups. Look at them go! They're so fun to watch. The animations are uh, again, as expected, just absolutely amazing. This is regular speed, by the way. I know it might seem like they're moving. Uh, Super fast, but but this is a regular speed. A really excited one. Okay, one thing I need to check before we get carried away is escape routes. Yeah, there's the one up there that I need to fix again. Oops. But apart from that, we should be okay. Which is good. That's the other thing I want to do with this uh, with this build is I kind of want to show some of these pieces and like some ways that they could be kind of used and attached and, and thrown together. What are you guys up to? Oh, look at that. Nah, I came here just too late. Just a second too late. Oh, there we go. I'm sure they're going to keep doing it. Look at that. We've got a burrowing animation in the background, I think, as well, that I might have missed out on, but it's okay. Clearly, they're going to they're gonna do it more often than not. You actually stand for quite some time. Wow, this is lasting a lot longer than I would have expected. Just a bunch of caretakers in here walking around with their... Get out of here! Get out of my shot! <laughs> That's really quite nice. That's really quite nice. I wonder if... <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I wonder if we should, like, just stick with, uh, with one... One guy here so we can kind of, like, follow them through all their motions. As opposed to move between a bunch of them and then potentially miss out on certain uh, certain animations, but I think uh, yeah, you see, you can see the little tunnel over here. And hold on, can we? We can't right now. That's just a texture. It doesn't actually. It's not actually a hole. That would be ridiculous if they actually borrowed the terrain. That would be. I wouldn't expect that. Oh look at this guy. Like he's taking a shower. <laughs> Where's that water coming from? It's not raining. I suppose you have reason to be alert. There's a bunch of these giants staring at you. That child is extremely excited. Oh, would you look at that? They're, they're, the coat over here has actually gotten wet, it looks like. Just having a seat. <laughs> Didn't know they did this. Dude's just, just taking a shower. What was that? Stuck his hand out. Yep, just sitting here chilling. I was really hoping to get kind of like, like I wanted to use like the mosaic tiles and stuff to kind of give that feeling of like, uh, like temperature control. Like you know, if, if if it's in the shade, it might stay cool and be a nice place to kind of like sit and, and lie down. Uh, but if you want to be out and about, you've got like the grass bedding and stuff as well, and uh, a bunch of rocks for them to hopefully perch on. Is was the uh, was the hope? They are able to climb them for the most part. They can't get on top of this one, okay? They can get on top of this one. That was the first one I put down. 
Yeah, so there's maybe a little bit of adjusting I might want to do, but I, I want to see if they actually even engage with these rocks the way I kind of uh, envision it in the first place, you know? Can I borrow? No, no. March through. I want to see how the borrowing works. Like, are they able to... One of the reasons why I have this path down the middle over here is because I want to see if they're able to, like, burrow and go from, like, one end to the other. And this guy seems to be... I just one up over here. I'm actually just stuck with watching the one. Well, it's got these termite mounds I want to see them engage with. Alright, alright. I'm hiding the UI so I don't get distracted by notifications because uh, that would be the uh, easiest way for me to miss something. But at the same time, I would want to keep an eye out for, like, mating and, and offspring and stuff like that. Kind of chilling here. Off you go. What are you up to? Man, I would love... <laughs> I would love to be this close to, to, to some meerkats. A mere few centimeters away. Where are you headed, buddy? See, I mean, I'm glad I gave them this massive uh, space to play in. You know, because now they can run around freely. They're not, like, sort of, like, shoved into a corner anywhere or anything like that. Like, they have just this room to just move around and, and do what they want. And yeah, sure, it's ten times the size of the, the space they need, but... They're having a good time. All right, they're fine. I'm keep an eye out for borrowing. And the use of this tunnel as well. This is their, uh, their, um, what's it called? Enclosure, um, enrichment item. Something with an E and an N. Details on the face as well. Get, uh, I wish the camera could be a bit more, um, slowly moved. Must have been absolutely super fun to, to animate this. I imagine looking at the references and, and seeing how they move to, to, to replicate it. Because I imagine it's all hand animated, right? Not like you're putting a mocap suit on a, uh, on a meerkat. I wonder if their animations are actually based on their environment a little bit. Like if there are lots of humans around, if they'll, if they'll be more likely to be alert. Are you about to jump into this? You look like you're lining up. Yes, you are. Go, oh, buddy. Oh, that's so good. It's like, yeah, they're actually like doing stuff. That's fun. Nothing overly complex, but it is fun. Ah, and it's nice to see people actually using these benches as well. That's great. Now, Burrow. Ah, uh, of course we... we I need to stop switching between the different meerkats. Of course we miss this guy as he decides to burrow because we get distracted by... I mean, at least we got to see the tunnel animation, right? Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. They go away. Nope. No such luck. Again, knowing my luck, I'm, I'm never going to catch the, uh, the animation happening. Two up over there. I mean, it's nice to see they burrow so much. Oh, did you see that? Now, it's a little weird that they're able to burrow on path. Remember, this is just, this is actual path, so it's a little strange they're able to do that, but, uh, we'll just see how they, they come out, at least. Even if it was, like, four pixels wide by four pixels tall on the screen. <laughs> come on, buddy. I believe in you. <laughs> so cute. It's also funny imagining this, like, adorable fuzzy little thing eating something like a scorpion, you know? Like, ripping its stinger off and then eating it. Just like... Ooh. Okay. I couldn't have asked for... Uh, like, this is great. They're actually leaning on each other! Are you kidding? That's amazing! I'm so glad we caught that! They were they were absolutely... Uh, ...being sentries together. They were working together there. Oh, that's great. It's the little touches sometime in this game. I, I often feel like... ...in franchise mode especially, it's, it's a lot harder to... ...get an appreciation for those little touches. Because there's always a notification to, to tackle. There's always, like, something to, to, to deal with or to work on. 
Uh, whereas, you know, with franchise, I can safely turn off the UI and I can just be like, okay, no, it's fine. Sorry, with, with sandbox, I mean. That was so cool. And the thing is, like, when you're able to turn the UI off and just kind of hang out with the animals, you can see a lot more of the finer details I'm talking about. Those things that last only a handful of seconds. But, you know, some animator spent who knows how many hours coding and, and some, uh, sorry, animating and some developer spent who knows how many hours, you know, coding in. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Looks so soft. Keeping an eye on those two as well in case they start borrowing. Nothing yet. I quite like how the space has uh, turned out. Uh, I like how the... Uh, I was a little worried, right? Because, again, it's like a desert region, grassland region, so you don't get that many trees or, or that, that much coverage, typically. Um, so I was a little worried about uh, how it ended up looking. But when you actually get down to, to ground level especially, I feel like it, it works quite nicely, the space. A lot of uh, interesting, like, shapes and colors, especially. Oh, the colors. Nice to see, again, the uh, the benches and stuff being used as well. I don't know why they have to be so scuffed up. <laughs> I wish there were, like, um, like a slider or, so or something that would let you determine how scuffed up it is. Ooh, yeah, climb the rocks. Just want to see them interacting with more stuff. Come on. Off you go, to the races it seems. Getting a drink I imagine. Moving with such haste. That it's just so it's so cute. Yep. No. Oh okay, just kinda hanging out. Or no, are you having a drink? You're having a drink. Again, glad I came here. Doesn't line up perfectly, but you you, you can see what they were going for. You can see what they were going for. Trying to catch one as they as they burrow. I mean, I guess that's an option as well for hydrating. I'll come in here for some sips. Yeah, looks like it. This, I mean, this water pipe is massive. It's like a it's like a lake for these meerkats. Doesn't seem too pleased with the camera. There we go. Checking out the decor. I love the little, like, uh, adjusting balance animation. They're, like, kind of tipping over and stuff, and, and so they, like, right themselves. Very nice. Feels so just, like, Like, if you told me they mocap these animals, you know, I'd be like, I mean, maybe. Just want to catch them burrowing. It's the saddest thing, we've seen the results of their burrowing, but we haven't actually seen the burrowing itself. Oops, still just kind of scouting. And in sentry, I suppose I should say. Come on, buddy. Come on. I mean, again, I don't mind catching them like this either. It's also fun, but... Let's see what else they get up to. <laughs> Seeing that guy react to, the, uh, to this guy running around was nice. Go through this tunnel, I assume. We saw it from the other side. Let's watch from this side now. Fun animation. Oh, it's kind of... it's. Oh, you stick your head out over here, eh? Okay. I was wondering. I was like, at one point it looks like they clipped to the model. But no, they, they. I guess they stick their head out this. That's nice. Just kind of flopping down. <laughs> Making sure nobody else can use it. 
It's like people who, when they step off the escalator, they just kind of like stand there for a second. It's like, no, keep keep moving. It might be somebody behind you. Or like people who come off a slide and then just kind of like sit there at the bottom. It's like, keep, keep moving. Absolutely killing. Hey, buddy. You know you want to dig. I was so worried I missed it. I got nothing. You know, we, we could try and bring uh, more of these guys in. Yeah, those are our options. They like big crowds, right? Bring you all in. I want to make sure I didn't have a sun bear selected by mistake. That would have been unfortunate to say the least. Oh, here we are, a pair of them. Working together again. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's, uh... That's really cool. Off they both go. Who to follow? Who to follow? Who's more likely to borrow? Going my luck. None of them right now. Are you eating or? They just kind of forced some food out. Fair enough. Oh, hey, there we go. Just wondering if we'd at least catch them uh, interacting with these termite mounds. Eh, nothing too wild over here. Basically, what you'd expect to see. Okay, they're still up there. Oh, did you seriously? No, okay. What happened here? Somebody's borrowing. My eyes peeled. <laughs> Wait. There we go. There we go. Le at least we kind of saw one coming out. Kind of. So close. A bunch of new ones have arrived as well. Just increases our chances of seeing the uh, animation go down. Or so you'd think. Play with this? Or just kind of stand here instead. Oh yeah. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's a full-on, yeah, full-on interaction animation. I mean, I, I figured they interacted like that, but uh, I'd never seen it. And of course, we, we missed a borrow ring. That's exactly what I was getting at. It's like, you'd think having more of them around would increase the likelihood of me seeing one of them borrow. But truth be told, it just increases the likelihood of me focusing on one that's doing something interesting and then missing the uh, borrowing animation. There's another one down over here. That's what This is what the, the rest of this uh, mini-series is going to be, just me trying to catch one of them borrow. that they're like standing on the rocks and stuff as well. Kind of what I was hoping for. Oh, well, this guy's just straight up sitting up over here. Nice. Yeah, they're they're using the space. Oh, there we go. Down you go. Now, how do you predict where they're going to come out? How far are they willing to go? My eyes peeled over here. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's adorable. I'm glad I've caught this. Oh, I, I wonder if... They must disappear when they're underground. I'm not sure, though. Okay, I'm curious now. Should have checked that. Okay, this is way too adorable. That's excellent. That's excellent. Alright, now if we can catch one more burrowing... And actually see if we can see them underground. Oh, down you go. Interesting. Didn't actually dig that, did they? 
Oh yeah, they disappear. That's what I figured. I figured they would disappear. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they're they're using pre-existing uh, holes as well. Okay, rather than just dig them every time, they are also using pre-existing holes. That's, staying down there is a good way to, to see where they might end up. Huh, okay, cool. Look, for real, this is just... <laughs> I just can't get over, like, this guy looking this way, that guy looking that way. It's like, this is straight out of a cartoon. It's straight out of a cartoon. If I could just get the camera to cooperate, this is great. <laughs> this is great. They are a comedic bunch of animals. Oh! Oh, didn't come out. Oh, it's a fake out. Oh, what do you know? Okay. All right. You about to dive in? No. Wait. Did you pop out back there? Did you? Are you the one who... How far can they go? And look at that. Three of them now. Down you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. I, I could I could I could chase Meerkat digging holes for hours, I guess. That's pretty cool though. It's it's neat to see how it works. It's neat to see um Like it seems like they don't go too far. It seems like they stay relatively close to where they dug or or got into the ground. And when they pop out it's just like a bit of a like poof animation. Alright. I guess I'll one go in here. Oh look at that. It's slightly misaligned, just ever so slightly. It would be nice otherwise to just see their head poke out properly, you know? Alright, good stuff. Good stuff. Actually, one thing I want to check is... Since we're here, how does a vista point work? I've got, uh, I've got a vista point, I'd say, up over here. I'll pop you down. I'm curious about this. That item focus. Okay. If I select this habitat. Not, no, not the rock. Not the roof. Not the rock. Not the rock. The habitat. So I guess when guests come over here, they will. Uh, they'll know it's to it's to check this enclosure out. I guess. I really I've wanted something like this for ever, basically. So I'm I'm glad to see it. Just want to get one into. To see what uh, what the behavioral changes might be over time, like we can see, it's relatively empty. No one's really looking in that general direction uh, right now. But with the vista point, we'll see uh, if it uh, if it makes a big difference. All right. I mean, hey, you know what? This was fun. This was fun. I I, I think they're enjoying the space quite a bit. Um, I was I was wondering if they if they would. I was wondering if they'd like stay cooped up in a corner or something or 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 anything like that but uh, but it seems like they're they're having a good time they're exploring it they're running around which is great and guests seem to well nobody here right now which is kind of funny but uh, it was very crowded just a moment ago looking pretty good looking pretty good but folks i think that might be what we're going to call it a session for today uh let me know which animal you would like to see added in next i of course have my own mind set on my own uh Sort of thoughts as well. I have, I have some plans, but as always, I do read through all the comments to see what people are interested in seeing next and 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 responding accordingly. Um, and, and that way, you know, again, I, I I'm pretty open to all of these animals in any order because I do quite like all of them. There are some that I'm uh, uh kind of gravitating towards, I suppose. But at the end of the day, I do quite like all the animals that have been added with this new DLC. So I'm looking forward to building their spaces in this little kind of corner of the zoo. Uh, but yeah, if you have a preferred order, you would like to see them. Uh, establishing or, or brought in in then uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, who you would like to see next and then you know we'll be back to our regular schedule as far as release timing we'll get the uh, the next animal in next time but uh, folks I hope you enjoy this little showcase of the uh, meerkat I hope you've uh, been able to see it in action enough I hope we caught all the animations that everyone was most excited to kind of like catch and, and, and see but uh, let me know if you'd like to spend more time with them as well. If there's something specific you'd like to see them do or interact with. And we'll kind of keep, keep that in mind as we add more animals in as well. Naturally, uh, we're going to be keeping an eye out for when they uh, hopefully have a baby. Which hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. But 
over the course of this miniseries, we're almost certainly going to see at least one baby meerkat. And when that does happen, of course, we're going to spend some time with them. But folks, that is it for today's session. I hope you had a good time. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel. What I do, what I don't do. I'll go about doing what I do. If you're familiar with the channel, you know the drill by now. Again, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.